Hi, I'm Jay John. Welcome to the Just 10 series here in London. We're looking at God's 10 commandments and we're going to focus on the fourth commandment, keep the Sabbath day holy. And the title is how to prevent burnout. to prevent burnout. Would you agree that the pace of life is hectic? Yes. Now, if your body could talk, what would your body be saying? Perhaps it is talking in the language of protest. When we refuse to cooperate with God's principles for their proper maintenance. The trouble with success is that it is the same formula for having a nervous breakdown for many people. And the commandment, Exodus 20, verse 8, says this. Remember to observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days a week are set apart for your daily duties and regular work. But the seventh day is a day of rest dedicated to the Lord your God. Like all of God's Ten Commandments, the Sabbath was designed not to be a burden to us, but to be a blessing. God has arranged time to unfold in seven day periods. And the emphasis of the fourth commandment is that our work should all be done within six of those days. However, the work ethic of some people does little justice to the built-in human need for a balanced life. In Japan, they have a word in their vocabulary, karoshi. And the word karoshi means death from overwork. In Japan, death from overwork accounts for 11% of Japan's death rate. That, you almost have to process that. That's unbelievable. You see, the pace of many people's lives is killing them. And many people are burned out. And we can burn the candle at both ends and wake up and discover that we're not that bright after all. <laughs> Too many people today have got so many irons in the fire, they've actually put the fire out. And what we need to do is to take out the irons out of the fire, stoke up the fire. If we don't live by priorities, we are going to live by pressures. Jesus said in Mark 2, verse 27, the Sabbath was made to meet the needs of people and not people to meet the requirement of the Sabbath. Now, many people cannot avoid working on a Sunday. Doctors, nurses, the police, fire people, all sorts of people cannot avoid working on a Sunday. Are they breaking this commandment? No, because the principle is that you work six days out of the seven, but you keep the seventh day for worship and rest. Now, of course, if you don't have to work on a Sunday and you have the option to choose, then you shouldn't work on a Sunday because there is great value in meeting together to worship on the same day 
as a practicality. But when that isn't possible and you don't have a choice, then you must still make sure one day in seven is a day of rest and worship. So the commandment says, remember to observe the Sabbath. In other words, don't skip it and say, oh, I'll I'll miss it this week. It's very interesting, isn't it? We've got 10 commandments, 10 commandments. With this one, we go, oh, no, I can't keep it this week because I'm busy. I mean, how do you you think my wife would feel if I said to her, oh, darling, uh, do you mind if I skip the adultery one this week? Well, I've got an opportunity. (laughs) I mean, I didn't expect the opportunity, but I've got this opportunity. But, Killy, if I just skip it for this week, next week, I'll be faithful to you. (laughs) Partial faithfulness is no faithfulness at all. How do we keep the Sabbath? By doing things that God intended for our benefit physically, emotionally, and spiritually. So how do we keep it? Three principles. Principle one, the Sabbath, a day to rest our body. Principle one, a day to rest our body. From the Bible, Exodus 20, verse 9. You have six days each week for your ordinary work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath day of rest dedicated to the Lord your God. On that day, no one, no one in your household may do any work. This includes you, your sons, your daughters, your male and female servants, your livestock, and any foreigners living among you. You cannot make your children work on the Sabbath. That's, you can't do it. If you're making your children work on the Sabbath, you're breaking this commandment. I don't know why we pick and choose the Bible. Oh, I like this bit, I don't like that bit. Oh, I'm not gonna keep that bit. No, no, it's there, there it is. God says no work, a day, of physical non-productivity. I'm, yeah, oh, I'm just going to check to see how things are going in the business. No, 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 no. You do that for six days. You don't do it on the Sabbath. Oh, I'm just going to... No, 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 no. You don't do it. You do it for six days, not on the Sabbath. Have you noticed how children hate to go to sleep? But we know unless they get their proper rest, they aren't going to be fit to live with the next day. Now, some of you have not been taking a day off and you're not fit to live with. A wealthy businessman was very disturbed to find a fisherman sitting beside his boat. Why aren't you out there fishing, he said. The man said, because I've caught enough fish today The businessman said, well, why don't you catch more fish? The man said, what would I do with all of those extra fish? The businessman said, you could earn more money and buy a better boat so that you could go deeper and catch more fish. You could purchase better nets, catch even more fish and make more money. Soon you'd have a fleet of boats and rich like me. The fisherman said, then what would I do? The businessman said, you could sit down and enjoy life. The man said, what do you think I'm doing now? (laughs) The Sabbath is a day to rest our body. Principle two, the Sabbath is a day to recharge our emotions. The Sabbath is a day to recharge our emotions. Chippy the budgie. Chippy the budgie never saw it coming. And what happened was, is that Chippy's owner 
wanted to clean the cage with the hoover. So she puts the hoover into the cage, but the phone rings and turned around to answer the phone. As she did that, <laughs> the hoover sucked in Chippy the budgie. I know, this is distressful. So she quickly switched off the hoover, opened the hoover, got the bag out, found Chippy. He is totally distressed. He is covered with dust. He has never had this experience before. He is just doesn't know what's happening. And, but covered in dust, she runs to the bathroom, she opens the tap, she puts Chippy under the tap. And now poor Sh Chippy is shivering, is shivering, is shivering. Yep. Yeah. And she then did what any owner would do. No, she didn't put him in the microwave. <laughs> But she got the hairdryer and she blew her head on Chippy. A newspaper heard about Chippy's experience and wanted to interview the owner about Chippy. And the owner said, Chippy doesn't sing anymore. He just sits and stares. Yeah. Well, it's not difficult to see why, is it? You know, sucked in, washed up, blown over. Uh, can any of you relate to Chippy? <laughs> How do we recharge our emotions? Quietness. There is so much noise pollution. The psalmist, Psalm 23, he leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. The Sabbath is a time when we step back to enjoy nature rather than figuring out how to change it. And it is only as we cease our restless doing that we will discover what needs to be done. Family, friends, the original Department of Health and Welfare. The most important things in life are not things, but people. And we need to spend time with our family and with our friends. It is not enough to grab a few minutes here or there. Family and friends are God's institution. Mealtimes are important gatherings in family life. And we should guard those gatherings against all intrusions. There is so much to be said for not answering our mobiles or texting during mealtimes. Other people can wait. And we need to learn to master the mobile rather than be enslaved to it. You see, technology promised us modern conveniences that would make our lives easier. But the truth is, computers, emails, mobiles have increased the pace of work rather than diminished it. Do you know, I was at a service station and stopped off for a coffee, went to the loo. And we guys, ladies, we guys, when we go to the, to the loo, right, there's, there's urinals, okay? There's an unspoken rule when you go to the urinals. You, you don't stand next to somebody. 
Yeah, you just don't do that. You know, yeah, there's always it has to be one empty, one empty. You know, I I go. It's like oh, well, if there isn't one, I'm waiting. I'm not gonna go. I'm not gonna cram in there. But anyway, so I was in here. There was an empty one, and then there was another guy there. Then this guy comes along, and he he comes into this one. It's like whoa, <laughs> straight away. But it wasn't just that. He had his mobile phone like here, and he was like this. He's like that, like that. And he's, and he's shouting, oh, yeah, 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 And he came on like this. And I thought, he's an idiot. He's an idiot. I mean, can he not just say to the person, I've got to go to the loo? It's a public arena. I've got to go to the loo, I'll call you back. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like that. So I said, Lord, I've had enough of this. <laughs> teach him a lesson. Honestly, this is true. I said, teach him a lesson. And I said it out loud. Teach him a lesson. The moment I said, teach him a lesson, his mobile phone fell into the urinal. <laughs> no, true. My assistant was with me. He couldn't believe it. <laughs> and, and the thing was, it fell into the urinal. He was so shocked, he peed all over it. <laughs> I turned to him, I said, that'll teach you. <laughs> I said, don't use the mobile phone when you're in here. <laughs> I said, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Come on. The word leisure is derived from the Latin word lycia, which means permission. The main reason many people do not have enough leisure is they are not giving themselves enough permission to take the time to enjoy it. Leisure is one of the best stress relievers and it is strange that people resist it so much. God is just as pleased when we play as when we work. When each is done to make possible the greater effectiveness of the other. The Sabbath is a day to rest our body. The Sabbath is a day to recharge our emotions. And thirdly, the Sabbath is a day to be renewed spiritually. People are spiritually bankrupt. We have so little time for God. Our lives are so full, and yet they are so empty. We have no room for God in our thoughts, in our schedules, in our lives. But when we keep the Sabbath day holy, we do not rest alone. A holy God joins us. And we read in Psalm 46, verse 10, Be still and know that I am God. Another translation of that verse is, stop fidgeting. Be still. Be still. Still your heart. Still your mind. Still your body. Worship renews our spirit as sleep renews our body. Sabbath is a time for being in the presence of the holy God and letting God shape our lives. In other words, stop working and let God work in you. Let God work in you. Does God have an opportunity to minister to you? When do you give God the time to do that? If not on the Sabbath, when? Sabbath is a day to tune in to God. 
a day to get our spiritual focus, a day to enjoy God. We focus not only on our physical needs, our emotional needs, but our spiritual needs. Keep the Sabbath day holy, the Bible says, Isaiah 58. Don't pursue your own interests on that day, but enjoy the Sabbath and speak of it with delight as the Lord's holy day. Isaiah 58, verse 13. Did you notice in the middle of that verse what it says? Don't pursue your own interests on that day. Don't turn a God day into a golf day. Yeah? You see, it's about the family. And you sometimes hear about the father or, oh, I'm going to go and spend, I'm going to play golf all day because it's the Sabbath. Oh, what's your wife and the kids going to do? It's a holy day. Don't turn a holy day into a golf day. Look, I'm not anti-leisure. I'm not anti-hobby. What I'm saying is, is the Sabbath a priority for God and your family first? That's what I'm saying. I'm not anti-doing leisure. Give God the first part of the day of every week as a reminder to say, you are first in my life. You see, many people worship their work. They work at their play, and they play at their worship. Are we taking this commandment seriously? To rest our body, to recharge our emotions, to be renewed spiritually. See, while we like the idea and the appeal of the Sabbath, We resist the reality of actually observing it. But ignoring the Sabbath carries a heavy physical, psychological, emotional, and spiritual price tag. And one that increases along with the modern pace of life. And unless we change, there will come a time when it will be too late to do so. Too late because others will have already suffered too much as a result of our obsessive haste. Times will change for the better when we change. Our rest is ultimately found in Jesus Christ. And Jesus said this, come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, because I am humble and gentle, And you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke fits perfectly. And the burden I give you is light. Many of us need to rest first in Jesus before we can rest on the Sabbath. Many of us need to discover peace with Jesus before we can discover peace on the Sabbath. And the good news of Christianity is that the the king of kings, the king of the entire universe is inviting every one of us into a personal relationship with Jesus. And if we haven't yet discovered that, then my appeal to you is have peace with Christ. Discover that peace by 
connecting and encountering Jesus. I was not brought up as a Christian. When I was a student in London and I met a Christian, and in my first year at college, he gave me a Bible, he helped me understand the message of the Bible, and then he showed me one day in the last book of the Bible, in the book of Revelation, it has this beautiful picture of Jesus standing outside of a door of a house, knocking. And it says this, if you hear the knock, open the door and I will come in and eat with you. In other words, I'll come in and fellowship with you, fellowship with you. And I did that. I opened the door on the 9th of February, 1975, and I invited Jesus to come into my life. And I experienced his cleansing. I experienced freedom. I experienced his presence, his peace in my life. And I became his child. And I've been at peace with Jesus since that day. Since that day. I have peace with Jesus. I know Jesus. I know his presence, his peace, his power. If you don't know Jesus, open that door and let him in. If you've heard Jesus knocking on your door, why don't you open the door of your life now? I'm going to pray a prayer. Why don't you join in with me and pray this prayer and make it a reality for you, just as I did on the 9th of February, 1975. Here's the prayer. Thank you, Jesus, for knocking on my door. I open the door of my life now. I invite you in. Come in by your Holy Spirit. Come in to cleanse my life. Come in to heal my life. I am so grateful to you, Lord Jesus, for dying on the cross for me to purchase that forgiveness. May I experience it now. Fill me with your peace, your presence, and your power. I say to you, Lord Jesus, be resident in my life and be president. Thank you, Jesus, for hearing my prayer. 